Greetings. Tales from the gazebo. Such a beautiful day I thought I would have the natural sounds of nature giving you the wonderful music. So as promised we're gonna talk about the Ultravox album Rage in Eden. Well, the first thing that struck me about this was the album cover which I've done a sketch version of. You'll notice You've got this square face and only the left eye. Now this bit that I've shaded in is actually blue on the album cover. Now to me that is almost like it's something drawing out the mind of the Divine Feminine. Um, as I understand it, the Moon Eye and the Sun Eye go with the two halves of the brain. So it's for whatever the real reasons are, we, when you see all these well-known faces in the public eye, be it the Pope, the Presidents, celebrities, singers, and so on and so on, they've all got this black eye thing, and it's like, it does make you wonder what that really does signify. Um, there's many ideas on that, but it, it, I have, couldn't help but notice that this also have this has this left eye on this, it's actually a gold face. Now, interestingly, when the album was digitized and re-released we have this now half of it is dark blue and half of it is red but I don't know if you can see the V and also you have this horse here with this sort of symbol at the background it sort of says to me Mercury the winged messenger um, the colours of the blue and the red indicate to me that it's something to do with Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. Maybe this is a sort of division or a unification. The C turned on its side. I thought that was quite interesting. So what I'm actually going to give you an allegorical explanation to is the album called Rage in Eden, which has one of these two covers. So Rage in Eden was the fifth album by the British new wave band Ultravox released in 1981 by the record company Chrysalis. Maybe a coincidence when you think what a Chrysalis is. It reached number four in the UK album charts and a certified gold by the BPI for sales in excess of a hundred thousand copies. So we we'll start with the opening song we we'll go with the the vinyl um you order those there are nine songs in total and the names are sort of almost quite revealing the first song is called the voice then it's we stand alone rage in eden which is also the name of the album i remember death in the afternoon the thin war which was the first single release from the album, Stranger Within, Ascent on Youth, which also goes into an instrumental track, track called The Ascent, and finally, Your Name Has Slipped My Mind Again. So what I propose to do is give you a, um, a straight reading of the lyrics, and then I'll give you my interpretation of them. So we'll start with The Voice, which is, was a well-known single, so, The Voice by Ultravox. Native, these words seem to me, all speech directed to me. I've heard them once before, I know that feeling. Stranger emotions in mind, changing the contours I find. I've seen them once before, someone cries to me. The look and the sound of the voice, they try they try the shape and the power of the voice in strong low tones forceful and twisting again wasting the perfect remains i felt it once before slipping over me the look and the sound of the voice they try they try the shape and the power of the voice in strong low tones sweet be the voices decay draw on the lines that they say I'd lost it once before, now it cries to me. The look and the sound of the voice, they try, they try. The shape and the power of the voice. 
in strong low tones. So that is the lyrics for the voice. So I shall now, what I propose to do with these eight or nine songs of this Rage and Eden album is make a video on each um, each song and we'll do them in order. So going, returning now to the voice. So the opening line, native, these words seem to me, all speech directed to me. So that's implying something natural. These words do seem to seem to be natural. All speech directed to me. Well, that could be the external world. But I've heard them once before. So that is implying that it's... You already have the answers within. I know that feeling. Stranger emotions in mind. Changing the contours I find. Now, if you look at the sort of illustration of a brain it's always got those sort of bobbly bits on it well I would suggest that is about the rewiring of the brain the remapping of the brain thinking things in new ways thinking out the box as it were <coughs> I've seen them once before someone cries to me well the someone I would say is the Christ within it's that gut feeling that is trying to remind you now the chorus of this song the look and the sound of the voice, they try, they try. The shape and the power of the voice in strong, low tones. Well, the look and the sound of the voice, we can interpret as being the vibration. I would also refer, refer you over to the Black Sheep Researcher Channel, who's done a wonderful video um, on the throat and how it resembles a triangle or a pyramid. Well worth looking at. Um, it's pretty much about sort of knowing yourself, your physical body as much as anything else. So the look and the sound of the voice. They try, they try. Well, it's that old question of who is they. Well, they can be... It's, it's repeated there twice. They try, they try. I'm suggesting here... It's the system programming to the ego is the first they... And the second they is the external world, the projected screen that will try and stop you finding that internal voice. Then it says here about the shape and the power of the voice. Well, the power, it's the power and the wisdom of Christ. The words that come out uh, of, of everyone's mouth, the sound vibration. What are we say? What are we really saying? What message are we trying to share? It's in strong low tones. I think that is again is a reference to the. It's low down. It's in the. It's in the gut. It's the solar plexus. It's the voice within that is trying to come forward. So the second verse, forceful and twisting again, wasting the perfect remains. So I would take that as being this reality, this external reality. It's forceful, it's twisting again, wasting the perfect remains, these physical vessels that we find ourselves in as soul carriers, as soul carrying vessels for the spirit. They're subject to time, so they will decay. So they would be perfect remains because we were created perfectly. I felt it once before, slipping over me. Well, I would suggest that is the, the sort of down, what was called the spiritual downloads. It's coming over. And we go back to the chorus, which I've already done. So we go on to the final verse. Sweetly, the voices decay. That, I'm, I I'm, would say, is a reference to the ego. How... As we master our thoughts, that aspect starts to fade away. Draw on the lines that they say. I lost it once before, now it cries to me. Again, I think that is talking about the inner standing, that knowledge that we all have. But where we haven't been through experiences, it's not so easy to find. And it's back to the look and the sound of the voice. They try, they try. The shape and the power of the voice in strong, low tones. So I would t overall, I would take that song as referencing the, the voice of God, shall we say, for want of a better description. I'm not going to get into the realms of 
people's interpretation of that. I have my ideas on it. Personally, I would say say go with the thing that, um, or go basically go with Neville Goddard and the New Thought writers, the ones that I mean Neville Goddard says on pretty much every lecture, it it's test it for yourself. You have an opportunity to find out the truth for yourself. The truth is known only to one. It is from personal experience. It doesn't matter if anybody believes it or doesn't believe it. You know it from your own experience. So yes, I think the voice is very much, it's that calling, that it's the opening song. It's that first stage of awakening, that inner voice that's talking to you when you sort of realise that something is wrong. It's very interesting that the way the order of these songs go, um, I think that is not a coincidence. I'd say that this whole album, Rage in Eden, is all about an allegorical story. It's about a personal journey, the, the truth-seeking, the spiritual path. So I'll le we'll leave the second song, which is called We Stand Alone. I mean, even the title of that speaks volumes to me. So we'll just give you the other alternative album cover here. Um, you can find these easy enough if you put in, go on YouTube, put in Ultravox, Rage and Eden, full album. Or if you go on um, just a Google search and put in Ultravox and look for images. I mean, think also of the name Ultravox. I mean, Vox is voice. It's the ultimate it's the collective consciousness, but uh, we'll leave over the, my other thoughts and interpretations on this to uh, the next video in this series. So thank you very much for listening, and I really do hope you are having as beautiful a day as I have had. I mean, the sun is shining, the robin is singing away there. Um, great company when you're out in the garden, and this is just wonderful. It, it really does feel like the first sort of proper day of spring. So, love to you all. I wish you all well. Stay strong. Stay in your power. The external might seem awful, but uh, it will soon pass. Just find that inner strength within, and you'll get through this no trouble at all. So, Ilakesh and Tata for now.